in the middle of this uh, AI gold rush, everyone's chasing the big names, right? Yeah. NVIDIA, AMD, maybe even Supermicro, looking for those, you know, spectacular chip designers. Headline grabbers, yeah. Exactly. But there's this one company kind of quietly sitting right at the foundation of all that growth, mm -hmm. not designing the main processor, but powering it, giving it the lifeblood for every massive AI model mm -hmm. memory. And that's Micron, ticker MU. That's Micron. And well, in 2025, Micron finds itself caught between two huge, almost contradictory stories. Okay. On one side, you've got this incredible AI infrastructure boom, just driving unprecedented demand. Right, the tailwind. But on the other side, there's the harsh reality, the geopolitical struggle over advanced chip tech. Uh-huh, the China situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Micron's been dealing with a complete ban on key government projects in China since 2023. And just weeks ago, new restrictions popped up. More restrictions? On what specifically? On memory imports used in AI servers. Mm -hmm. So it's getting even tighter for them there. Wow, okay. But here's the real twist, the reason we're diving deep today. Despite all those uh, serious geopolitical headwinds, Micron's stock. It's been on a tear, hasn't it? It's quietly climbed over 105% in the past year. Just phenomenal. And that's down to HBM demand. Entirely. Soaring demand for high bandwidth memory HBM. These ultra fast chips, they're essential for the next gen AI GPUs. Right, stuff inside NVIDIA's latest chips. Exactly. So today we're asking, you know, is Micron maybe the most misunderstood play in this whole AI race? Hmm. And can its big pivot to high value HBM really, truly outrun this massive strategic challenge posed by China. Welcome to Facts Not Forecast, your daily edge in the stock market. Facts, insights, and opportunities you won't hear anywhere else. And our mission today is crystal clear. Absolutely. We're diving deep into Micron's uh, operational and financial transformation. We need to analyze exactly how this aggressive move into high bandwidth memory is driving a major financial recovery. And weigh that against these persistent, serious geopolitical tensions. It's a fascinating balance. It really is. Okay, let's start with Micron's role. How are they enabling AI? What's the core business? Right, so at its heart, Micron provides memory and storage solutions. Primarily, you're looking at DRAM dynamic random access memory. That's the fast working memory, right, volatile. Exactly, and then there's NAND flash memory. That's your non-volatile storage, like in SSDs. Got it. But where does the AI money specifically land within Micron? Okay, to get that, you have to look at how they segment their business. They've got divisions for mobile, embedded tech, storage, but the real engine right now. Let me guess, compute and networking. You got it. The compute and networking business unit, CNBU, that's the powerhouse driving this surge. And why CNBU? Why is that the segment we need to laser focus on? Because um, CNBU is specifically built to serve the cloud server, enterprise, graphics, and networking markets. Ah, uh, so basically where the hyperscalers are spending. Precisely. This is where the world's biggest companies, the ones building these huge foundation models, are dropping billions on data centers. So if an NVIDIA or AMD AI chip needs memory. It's CNBU selling it to them. It's like the direct artery feeding right into that massive AI spend. And this is where it gets interesting, right? It's moving beyond just commodity DRAM. Exactly. Micron is really trying to shed that image, you know, the cyclical supplier of just standard chips. They're trying to become what? A producer of specialized components. Yeah, high performance, critical infrastructure components. And the key catalyst here is HBM, high bandwidth memory. Okay, explain HBM. Why is it different? Well, for years, memory was just memory, right? Sort of flat. HBM is different because it uses vertical stacking. Stacking chips on top of each other. Essentially, model. yeah. Piling DRAM chips vertically. And this massively increases the bandwidth. Bandwidth meaning the data flow rate. Exactly. How fast data can move, mm -hmm. which is absolutely essential for the kind of huge parallel processing AI training and inference needs. Okay. So like if the AI model is a giant highway, HBM is like suddenly tripling the number of lanes. Mm. Data moves way faster between the GPU and the memory. And if the data can't get there fast enough, the expensive GPU just sits idle. Precisely. Wasting energy, wasting time, bottlenecking the whole process. And we're seeing Micron commit to this. Definitely. Look at their product announcements. They've started sampling advanced 192 gigabyte SOCAM M2 memory modules. Okay, that sounds dense. It is. And these aren't just faster chips. They're modules specifically engineered for AI data centers. Max density, max efficiency. So they're positioning themselves as this sort of quiet 
enabler. That's a great way to put it. Making sure that when the big AI chips are ready, the memory infrastructure isn't the weak link. Without this advanced memory, the AI boom could actually stall. That tech leap is impressive. Yeah. But uh, did it hit the bottom line? Because historically, Micron's been the definition of a cyclical stock. Oh, absolutely. The poster child, you wait for the memory glut, buy cheap, sell when supply tightens. That's been the playbook. So let's talk about that swing. Mm -hmm. How bad was the recent trough? Devastating. Just two years ago, fiscal year 2023, the bottom just fell out. What were the numbers? Micron posted an annual net loss of $5.83 billion. Wow. Billion with a B. Yeah. Resulting in a negative basic EPS of $5.34 per share. That was a really serious crisis point, reflecting a totally oversupplied market. Okay, fast forward to now. Looking at the latest trailing 12 months data for FY 2025, driven by this AI demand, the turnaround. It's phenomenal. Almost hard to believe compared to 2023. Give us the numbers. The change is just stark. Revenue surged to $37.38 billion. That's almost 49% annual sales growth. And the bottom line, that near $6 billion loss. Turned into an $8.54 billion net income gain. Incredible. And EPS. Skyrocketed to $7.65 per share. I mean, this isn't just a small recovery. It feels like a paradigm shift in their financial output. And the key factor supporting that idea of a structural shift has to be pricing power, right? Margins. Exactly. Margins define profitability. And their gross margin recovered sharply, back over 40%. It's 40.17% right. TTM. For a company that was selling memory almost at cost not long ago. Hitting 40% suggests they're successfully selling those high-value specialized products like HBM, stuff that commands a premium, not just dumping commodity BRAM. So they're getting paid for the innovation. Absolutely. And the market seems to think this isn't just a temporary bounce. Analysts are projecting continued strong growth. What are the forecasts? Revenue growth projected at 14.3% per year. And crucially, EPS growth rate forecast at 16.44% per year. And why is that 16.44% number so important? Because that forecast is actually faster than the predicted U.S. market average growth rate, which is around 15.5%. Ah, so they're expecting Micron to outperform the overall market. Based on this new structural foundation, yes, that's the argument. Okay, so phenomenal financials, tech leadership. But it's all happening right in the middle of the biggest geopolitical flashpoint the U.S.-China tech war. Yeah, Micron's strategic position is pretty unique here. It's the only major U.S.-based maker of these critical memory components. Which makes it both vital for U.S. interests. And an immediate target for restrictions from China. The sources say the company has been, quote, waving goodbye to and actively pulling out of the data center chip business in China. Following those restrictions that really ramped up in 2023? Exactly. Okay, losing a huge market like China sounds like a disaster on paper. But what did that forced exit actually do for their strategy? Well, it basically forced the pivot we're talking about. They lost those large Chinese government contracts, often for lower margin commodity stuff, right? and replaced it with a concentrated effort on high value, high margin AI data center customers. Think US, Japan, other allied markets. So they treated volume for value. Pretty much, yeah. And you see that reflected directly in that massive gross margin recovery we just talked about. It's like turning adversity into a high margin opportunity. It's a compelling narrative, yeah. Yeah. A story of trimming the fat, focusing purely on the future, driven partly by geopolitics. And that pivot seems to have really convinced investors. Let's talk market performance and valuation. The stock rent has been huge. Massive. It hit its all-time high recently, $219.82. Reflecting a one-year return of... What was it? Over 100%. 505.12%. Just yeah. incredible momentum, which suggests the market is buying into this structural shift story. Okay, but if we dig into the valuation, the relative valuation, does it match that story? Ah, well, that's where you hit the central contradiction or maybe the opportunity with Micron. How so? If this cycle is really broken, if AI provides a new structural floor... Why is Micron still trading cheaper than many of its peers? Okay, that's a key question for you, the investor. So Micron's trailing 12-month P.E. ratio using that recovered income. So it's at 28.8 times. Which sounds okay, but compared... It's to... significantly lower than the semiconductor industry average P.E., which is closer to 39.5 times. And compared to other big AI players like AMD. AMD trades north of 150 times earnings. So compared to that, Micron almost looks like a dare I say, value stock within the AI hardware space. Why the discount then, if the story is so good? Skepticism, I think. The market is still pricing in that historical cyclical risk. It's saying, okay, we see the massive profit now, but 
can they keep it up? Like prove it over several quarters before we value like a pure growth company like NVIDIA or AMD. Exactly. They're waiting to see if this strength is durable before fully re-rating the stock. What about the analysts, though? Are they buying the structural story? Oh, heavily bullish. The consensus rating is a strong buy. How many buys? 28 buy or strong buy ratings out of 41 total ratings covering the stock. And the price target? The median target is right around $215, basically where it's been trading near. Yeah. But the high target shoots all the way up to $270. Okay, so $270 implies pretty significant upside if everything goes right. It does. If the AI story plays out perfectly, yes. But... We have to introduce a critical piece of counter narrative here. Uh oh, what's that? It comes from our data on insider activity. Despite the huge stock run, despite the analyst optimism, there's been selling. There has been significant insider selling over the past three months. Hmm. By who? Junior people or? No, not just small players. The president and CEO, Sanjay Marotra. The CEO himself. Yes. Executed disposition sales multiple times throughout September 2025. At what kind of prices was he selling? Selling stock in the range of roughly $131 to $160 per share. Okay, that's interesting. Analysts are saying $270. The CEO was selling around $150, $160 just a month or so ago. It's a crucial data point you have to consider. On one hand, bullish external forecasts. On the other, the person who knows the internal numbers best, the CEO, taking some chips off the table at lower prices. Doesn't necessarily mean disaster, right? Could be a planned diversification, tax. Absolutely not necessarily disaster. But it does raise questions about conviction at the very top regarding, let's say, immediate sustained momentum right near the peak. So it forces you to balance the exciting tech story with maybe some psychological risk or caution signals. Precisely. You have to weigh it all. Look, Micron has always been seen as the cyclical chip maker. You know, the one you buy at the bottom and sell near the top. That was the classic playbook. But in 2025, maybe. Maybe that playbook is outdated. Because as AI keeps expanding, memory isn't just a sidekick anymore. It's really moving center stage. So the real question for you, the investor, right now is this. Is Micron finally breaking free from that old boom and bust cycle thanks to AI? Or are we just watching another temporary peak, maybe inflated by the current hype? That's the multi-billion dollar question. Appreciate you tuning in. Mm -hmm. Until next time, stay sharp, stay patient, and let the market work for you.